Welcome back, you wonderful people, to episode two of uh, Sevtech Ages of the Sky. And because you can see, I turn on shaders. I saw a video by Chosen Architect, and he had them on. So I thought, oh, well, we'll give them a try. I did, I did have them on in the last Sevtech Ages as well that I played on the ground world. Um, and that was that was pretty nice. So I do like the look of them. They can be a little dark at night, so um, do be aware you might need extra light around to be able to see a lot easier. I have turned the bloom um, down substantially. Uh, or even off, if I remember rightly, because it um, it looks a little bit too dreamy for me when when that uh, when that sort it's all this haze around everywhere everything, and I don't quite like that. But otherwise, it's just the default shaders. So have a look in here if you want to follow along. Video settings. This is Optifine HD G5 Ultra, and in shaders, it is the BSL ones. I've also got the SEUS ones. I think they both will work fine, but um, yeah, I'll leave leave that alone for now. So uh, what are we going to get on with today? Well, first of all, um, I think we're going to get on with what I forgot about at the end of last episode. Yes, I forgot what the Darklands Oak was for. Oak Planks is for upgrading chests. Now, of course, I've been using shelves because they have more storage space. I can't upgrade these in place, but I can go ahead and surround a normal chest. And then I should be able to make a primal chest. Yes, there's the primal chest. And if we surround that with, I think, bark. Uh, do I have some bark around? I have some over here. I've been turning that into resin. Uh, we'll be using that for leather. So let's just surround that with bark, I think. Yep. Now, this is much, much better. It's more like a vanilla chest. So if I just go and click that, it's not got as many spaces. If you just use the blue form without upgrading it again, you lose these bottom slots. You only have that top row. But even so, it's uh, so that's three, six, nine, uh, 12, 14, uh, 13, 14. So 14 slots. These are 16 slots. So I'll print need just as many shelves as I have now in chests. So that's seven ish maybe six i can get away with but i can go and craft those from chests and it's raining again i should make more barrels uh, this barrel's been okay but what i've been doing is preparing for automation uh you may already know what i'm going to be doing uh, with all the horses if you see this kind of pattern on the floor uh basically i'm going to have automated uh grinder an automated chopper and a press as well. I don't really have the room for the press at the moment, but the press is not as urgent. You only need it like once or twice from memory. So uh, we'll figure something out for that as well. I'm probably just going to expand this ground inwards on this side. I have been doing it already. Would have been crafting leather. So speaking of leather, I've been drying out some hides over here uh, on the, these drying racks. Just wood to make them. No problem there. And you can see I've still got 45 raw hide. I'm not going to process any more raw hide. Um, you, know, you should be able to pick this chest up as well. Oh, that's so nice. Um, yes. Um, I'm not going to process any more raw hide because as soon as we get into an, the next age or two, uh, there's much, three or four times faster ways of doing leather than, than actually doing it the way we have to do right now. Which is to say, right now, we need this resin that I've been grinding up over here. So you need the resin, you need water, and you need the dried hide. And the procedure is very manual, very intensive, but you don't need very much of it, thankfully. Uh, I've, I've made far too many dried hides here, but I take a fluid, fluid bladder. Um, go and pick up some water from whichever one of these I haven't yet clicked on. Uh, come on, one of you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I've been uh, doing some of this already. And combine those three, you get wet tanned hide. And you put this back on your drying rack and uh, you end up with uh, leather. And that will take uh, a few minutes, but it turns into leather. As soon as you pick that up, that will be your achievement done for leather, which is down here. Leather then leads into a teepee, which is basically a fun kind of tent. And uh, that is just about five leather, I think, if you remember rightly. And leads, the leads are the important thing because then that leads to these three things. So there's the grindstone, the chopper, and the, uh, the, the press. Both of these get used a lot in the upcoming advancements. That one, not so much, as I said. And we also want to head down here and get to this at the end, this this millstone from Better With Mods. The millstone you have to use with a hand crank to get started, but later on, you'll, all this stuff is leading into mechanical power, which is like Rotary Craft, if you guys remember Rotary Craft, but much easier. <laughs> it doesn't need torque and RPM settings. You just hook everything together with gearbox and axles. It's all fine, as long as you're not using too fast windmills, but we'll, we'll get onto that in a little bit. If you're enjoying this episode, or indeed the previous episode and, and future ones of the series, do remember please to hit subscribe below and click on the notification bell to hit all notifications, I think it is, so that you can get future 
notifications at the top right of YouTube. Now let's get on with a little bit more. I'm going to do some leather crafting in the background and lots more chests and then we'll get on with the rest of the episode. And it should be noted while you're doing all this crafting, these st stumps do actually break <laughs> like that. Um, well, my crafting rock broke before the stump. Let's just break uh, this now. Uh, in fact, hang on, I need to put uh, a rock down. There we go. Uh, yes, so it does break, but I have made more. However, you can actually upgrade them uh, to using these shelves. So you, these shelves aren't a waste. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, if you want a Mark II version of these stumps. So if we just uh, look, grab one of these, for example, and if I just use, press U for uses, with Dark Oak, if you find it, uh, you can use a shelf, a couple of chopping blocks, and you can basically put a full stack per slot. So if you want to make a lot of something, you can actually do that. I haven't bothered, but just a quick tip, if you do want to just alleviate the whole clicking uh, mechanic here until we get shift clicking, when we get to a proper crafting table, as you can see, I've got plenty of chests to go through now and uh, upgrade. Here we are, just finishing off the chests. Almost done. There we go, full finished, and we can then put them up. I've put labels on the one that I'm currently using, but uh, we'll probably use it, end up using quite a bit more. Crafting grids are now on the ground because, yeah, I do know that they're now facing the chests, so I know to always craft that direction. And I uh, just cleaned up the other side, which means we have some leather available, which is getting the leather achievement, which is important. And then that means I can then combine that with, I think it's this pattern with this. I could look it up in JEI, but I'm almost sure it's something like this. And there's our TP. Now you need some space that's in the open air to place it, but otherwise it is uh, for bed. Um, let me just move this torch maybe. Can I move that torch out of the way? Uh, how about uh, there? You know, you're not going to accept that. Hmm. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That'll do for now. Uh, we can sleep through the night, obviously, with that. There's better beds available later, but we'll get back to those when we get to them. Uh, so for now, I guess I could just put up the rest of the uh, wet hides to turn into leather. Um, there we go. Some of the packs have you changing zombie flesh into leather, but there is a better use for zombie flesh. Uh, you can actually turn it to food, but I wouldn't. Um... <laughs> And that's uh, for a very, very good reason. Uh, you can later use it for something. And I, you can't see it yet, but we'll come back onto it later. So keep some rotten flesh for the next age if you can. I went back over to our Darklands uh, biome island, wherever it is. It's over there. <clears throat> Let's just show you that. It was at the end of the last episode. And uh, I lit it up with torches. So it's now nice and safe over there for me to build a mob farm. And um, we'll be doing that pretty soon. Started to move this land inward as I've been using the water up. So I should be able to get a, just about another square of 7x7 seven seven in there for our automation. So speaking of automation, uh, in fact, first of all, how about sleeping bag? If I go exploring, that'll be useful as well. Uh, yes, that uses thatch thin slabs. Harder to say than anything else. Uh, that comes from fl flat... <laughs> thatch which comes from dry thatching uh you can make that with reeds if i remember rightly uh it's the it's not those it's not sugarcane it's the other kind like rushes sorry not reeds rushes so if you use those uh let me just get some uh, from odds and ends maybe uh you know i label things and then I immediately lose said labels. There's, there's the thatch, and you can make this wet thatch. That's what I was looking for. Wet thatch. That comes from fresh thatching, which comes from rush stems, and they're, they spawn on islands. Uh, you can uh, get this another way, I think, uh, maybe. Um, or maybe not. But uh, if you want to actually do that, you can get thatch, and then you can use that on a chopping block, I think, to get thin thatch, which is what we need for a sleeping bag. It's not essential, but it's nice to have it out there. If you're caught uh, and it goes dark, then at least you can sleep pretty much anywhere. Uh, and you need to make sure to remember to turn off the option where it actually um, it sets your uh, your home point. So turn off the option before you actually do this. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will be very sad if you uh, die. You will be on an island well nowhere and um, have a bit of a problem getting back. Uh, one, two, three and where's our crafting rock there we go so there is our sleeping bag and another achievement and it's uh, coming nighttime so let me just uh, make sure that 
right click to toggle spawn point off set spawn point spawn point off yes so if i right click here i should have used the tp to be honest but uh just to demonstrate this does actually work fine yep and it's the next morning good all right so that's that done that's further down here and with the opening of leather we need to get well we have to get uh, to get down here if you want to uh, leads now leads are just leather processed essentially but they're also used to make the horse grindstone the horse chopping block so the horse grindstone needs two leads leads so does the chopping block and so does the press so each of those takes a cordage so that you need six cordage and six cordage is going to be 18 leather strips and leather strips are nine so you actually need two pieces of leather for this and I've got one on me, uh, two on me. There we go. Uh, so straightforward to actually do that, I think, if I remember rightly. So let's just work backwards through this. It's just the flint work blade. So like a lot of other things, you've got it on you. So you don't need to do anything else. And uh, you just need to combine that with string. So I'm going to work up until I've got enough leads. And you're probably, I'm going to probably make a few extra as well anyway, because you need three for horses on top of that. So I'm going to make another leather work, uh, leather worth of uh, of cordage and uh, we can uh, use that too so i'm just going to go and craft each of those three things they're just stone just sticks and bits and pieces and then we'll get into automating horses and i have far too many i'm gonna have to, i have no way of actually walling them off other than actual walls right now um because i don't have any fence there's no fences there's no gates i don't think Nope, we don't have any of that yet. Apparently, we don't know how to figure out a fence. So uh, I have to put walls around if I want to stop other horses getting in and stuff like that. So we'll see about that. Anyway, onward. Okay, then. Horse automation. Let's get started. Craft the relevant items. And I get out of the way. Get, get, move. You are definitely going to be used. There we go. There's the chopping block, the press, and uh, there we go. So we've got all three of those, or all two, is there not? Three? I thought there'd been three. Press charcoal. Oh, you have to press the charcoal. Fine, no problem. Uh, anyway, to get started, I'm just going to put in some chests. So, a chest there, uh, a one here. Uh, there's no, it's not below ground. You'll see why in a second. And this one. Then we're just going to put in some uh, hoppers onto the backs of them, as you might expect earlier. Automation, inverted quote marks. Uh, and then we're just going to want to put these down. So to start off with, our chopping block closest, I think. Then we want the um, mill or grind grindstone. This has to be one level up. You can't actually put it on the ground, unfortunately. And then we have the press. And then finally, we just get, grab some horses and just grab a you. You're being bound to that. Uh, you can be bound to the, that. And then you... Can be bound to be there. No, oh, that didn't work. Uh, my lead dropped. Maybe it went too far. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the shaders can be a little bit wonky by with seeing the leads sometimes, but that's fine. They're all now bound, which means uh, I can actually just put in stuff to be processed. Uh, excuse me a minute. There's a dog barking in the background. Very distracting. And the automation's done. I've put in some input chests and some hoppers and everything should work. Yep, here we are. We've got some birchwood planks. No longer need the chopping block anymore. You shouldn't need it, so you can free up some space potentially. Leave it in a chest just in case and the worst should happen. But otherwise, good. So that's fine. The grinder also, I don't think we're going to need that either. So I'll take it down and put it in a chest again. Same thing. Uh, where's my shovel? Travel even. There we go. Nice and neat. Okay, and that one's almost broken. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good so far as far as our base is concerned. Now, I guess we should turn our eyes back to this whole thing. Uh, oh, we need to uh, press charcoal into a larger block. Um, charcoal. And then if we put in a press, which is this one, it's just none of the regular charcoal. Okay, so we need to grind down some charcoal and then repress it back again. For some nice reason, uh, it's in wads and ends, I think. Yeah, some low grade charcoal. So we can just go and put that in to our input chest up here, and it should start being ground down by this horse. Uh, I think I may have lost. Are you even the the horse I I've put a lead on? 
I may have lost the one for this already. Occasionally they break and nothing you can do about that. You just reattach a new lead and it all works again as before. In early machines, I guess, uh, until we get to um, more than one horsepower per machine. Okay, so moving on. Uh, I'll go and do that in the background. That's not no big deal. Um, we do want this uh, piggy backpack, however. Um, you can pick up animals to safely carry them around. Now, if you you have an, uh, an animal over here, like say the sheep, uh, if we shift right click, we can already pick it up. But <laughs> with the piggy backpack, you can pick up all kinds of things. Uh, just like cows is probably the first one you're going to want. Uh, a mushroom was, will do as well, or cows, either of those. You're going to bring back a breeding pair because we need to turn them into buffaloes with the uh, totemic mod. So you need to go and find them and bring them back. So you do need to actually make that uh, piggy backpack. And uh, it will also work while you're gliding as well. So uh, no big deal here. It's just some leather and uh, some sticks. So I'll go and make that as well. Uh, in the background, we, is there anything else I want to actually do? I don't think I want to do any of this. We're going to get into Totemic soon. Uh, Totemic is really important, particularly for uh, mob farms. Uh, one of the things you can craft with it is a totem pole, and that totem pole can stop creepers from exploding, which is wonderfully required <laughs> to make a mob farm, uh, at least an early game manual mob farm, um nice and safe for you to be around you can put night vision on and on strength and all kinds of other stuff with totems they're very very good for things that are fixed in location so the center of your base mob farm anything like that you can use totem poles for and they don't take any energy you don't take any maintenance once you've actually done them once so there those are going to be done and uh, that's pretty much most of it we're going to need to get to this shadow gem and that also leads on to the hopper so let's just look at the whopper uh flame there it is uh, in fact i haven't already done that i'll add it to favorites uh so yes we need red cedar that's totemic uh charcoal dust we can just uh, basically crush uh we need to get to the middle stone for it but we can just crush a charcoal and the middle stone is our grindstone and some stone slab so we can already do that essentially the the thing that you stops you doing the middle stone is the hand crank the hand crank does need uh the wooden gears and the wooden gears need buffalo teeth. So you need to actually get those buffalo I was talking about. Okay, otherwise it's just this shadow gem, which you can't see until you've actually looted one. Uh, otherwise it's all stuff we have. The shark tooth comes from the uh, the strainers. So now we just need totemic and we need some kind of basic mob farm to get us started. Uh, the mobs that can appear, I should warn you, um, yes, they're quite nasty, but the other thing in the dark ones, this is the, the mob farm, they're quite nasty, but the main thing there is that they're quite big, or they can be quite big. So if you're normally used to like the narrow one by one by eight or one by twelve kind of internal space and too high, so that would stop Enderman from spawning, but you get everything else like skeletons and zombies, and you'd shoot down from one end and be able to, with ranged weapons and be able to kill a lot of them. Uh, not so much in this case. What I would tend to do is have that internal space be about three or four high and about three wide instead of one wide because the mobs that appear can be really large. So you want to make sure that they can spawn so you get uh, lots of different uh, shadow gems. Now the shadow gems are the things that use this press. Uh, you get shadow fragments and then shadow shards and then shadow gems. So we'll need some mob farm which I'll do offline and then show you rather than uh, show me constructing lots of blocks. But yes, throw yourself back off the edge uh, over using your volokite and uh, set up a small mob farm. And here we are, just a simple mob farm setup. It's nine wide by three, uh, if you like, on the internals, and it is like four high, I think. Yeah, four high on the internals. I've left the torches in there. Obviously, we don't want it to start spawning. And on top, I could put half slabs, but it's just cheap. Just put two torches up there, and it, it'll light everything up just fine as far as that's concerned. And, uh, yep, yeah, you can see on the top. So, accessible from both sides, and uh, I'll sculpt around this area a little bit and make it a little bit cleaner later. But uh, for now, this is perfectly fine. Now we need uh, the totems, and um, we also need buffalo, which means uh, we need to go and uh, throw ourselves off and hope uh, you are got the uh, the volokite equipped when you do this and then go and scout around turn off f7 mode scout around looking for a couple of things one is shogoth layers we're going to need those pretty soon and uh they'll they'll spot those the, the like dark uh almost black stone uh square entrances leading down there's one now uh, you can see it just on top i just uh, wait for a gust of wind to take me up a little bit 
Uh, the Shoggoth will come out of that. Yeah, there you go. See, the Shoggoth will come up out of that, and that's uh, how you get into Abyssalcraft. But um, for now, I don't need that. I need the cows, and uh, that's just mainly finding an island with the right biome. As you can see on the bottom right of my hotbar, I've got something pointing me back home. Make sure you do that before you ever jump off. Uh, so I am off to find a cow, and I've got one of those piggy bear backpacks on me so I can pick up a cow and uh, bring it home, or a mushroom, that will do as well. If you uh, if you spot one of those, a mushroom biome is easy to see and uh, much easier to grab hold of the things if you can see uh, the biomes. So yeah, off to find those. Okay, <laughs> mushrooms found. Uh, right click on them, you'll pick up the mushroom and then you can just run and jump off again uh, as before and head back home. Um, so that's pretty good. Off we go with our captive mushroom and just keep an eye of which side of the base you arrive on when you get back so that uh, because we don't really have a, a proper compass yet with north, south, east, west, you can look by the direction of the sun if you want. But uh, until we get a map, it, this is just nice and easy to just remember where you arrive back on. So off we go back to the base. I need to get two of these, so I need to go and get another one because uh, we need to convert them all and then breed them up into uh, a small herd of buffalo, which are quite noisy. So uh, turn the friendly animal sounds right down if you uh, don't want interruptions constantly on your base. Now we need to make our totemic stuff, so get yourself a piece of leather and other bits and pieces. Uh, we need to make the rattle first, which is these jingles. Uh, I've already made that in my inventory, and then we can just make the rest, I think. So that, and a, in fact, we can probably just do that in, uh, in this recipe. Yes, there we go. So there's the rattle, and then we can just do the rest. So I think there is a leather piece there, and right click go. Yes, that's the drum. And then we also want the uh, flute. And then we also want some wind chimes. Technically, the achievement doesn't say you need these, but uh, they, they they make it actually <laughs> possible for me because uh, this is rhythm based, if you like, to get the progress. So in here, I've got my two mushrooms. I've got a tree with some leaves. I'm not sure if wind chimes need leaves above them. Um, someone mentioned they did, so I, that's the way I do it. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see whether this actually works. So let's hang the wind chimes there, drop our totemic drum down. And then we want to have our other stuff in our inventory. So we want the rattle and we want the flute. Okay, and we should have the Totempedia. Now in your Totempedia, what you're really looking for is, uh, well, obviously it gives you lots of information, but in ceremonies, you're looking for the buffalo dance. And this basically gets you to, uh, to basically turn cows into buffalo. So it says use the drum and then use uh, wind chimes, essentially. So let's just do that. Uh, so drum and then wind chimes. You need to sneak and click them. Uh, that's working, uh, obviously. So sneak and click each of them. And then you need to basically outrun a timer that appears. You'll see uh, in a second. So if I do um, both of those, is that the right way around? It did say that, didn't it? Sneak and hit to use selector mode. Yes, uh, unless I have to do it in my inventory. Uh, that is sneaking and hitting. I promise. No, maybe it's in my inventory. So how about now? Uh, no, because that places. Hmm. Ah, yes, I did forget the one of the thing. It doesn't actually start any uh, ceremonies unless you have a totem base nearby. We do actually, that's one thing I forgot to actually craft. Uh, token bases are easy, you just need the knife in particular that, that makes them. Uh, so that is the totem whittling knife. That just needs a bit of like flint and a hard surface. So uh, do I have a bit of flint and a stick and a hard surface? I haven't made any hard surfaces. That's slightly annoying. I probably should pro probably correct that, but this will do for now. Uh, no flake flint yet. There's one, I think, or two, and totem whittling knife. We then just need some bare logs. You don't want to actually use anything else. You will get red cedar fairly soon, but for the time being, we should be able to get away with birch wood. So let's go and put that in place. Uh, anywhere near your, your basically ceremony will do. So I'm just going to put one, um, well, one there, maybe. Uh, let's actually place it the right way up. Not that I don't think it 
it's needed, but there we go. And then if you select your whittling knife, you should be able to just right click and you get a totem base. And that should be enough, but you can actually put the rest of the totem uh, in there as well. You can, you can make them up to six tall, if I remember correctly. So uh, yeah, there's quite, quite a bit of uh, stuff in totems we can get to. Will you now work? Yes, you will work. So shift right click, and then we're gonna basically drum and rattle at the same time. And basically race that timer at the bottom of the screen. And if you get white particles, it means you basically can't use that instrument anymore. And you're going to have to find another instrument. But in this case, you'll see some progress is also made by the, the chimes just working in the background. And it stopped. How about some flute? Oh, OK. So that's changed things. And now we have a buffalo. I was hoping to have two buffalo. Ah, there, there is the one. It, it's got out because uh, you can get through one by one blocks. <laughs> Let's just uh, block in the, uh, the the buffalo from actually uh, getting out, or at least it went up above the totem pole. That's the other way out. So let's just get rid of that for a second. Okay, so uh, we can just pick up that. Uh, we can just make sure you are kept in there for now. Not that we need them in here. We can put them in somewhere else. But uh, if I just take that back off, they'll then go, go. There you go. So we've got two buffalo. You can feed them as normal with wheat. We don't have a whale yet to see their timers for how long it takes before they can breed, but you have them available. I will probably move them to a different enclosure now that I've got this so that uh, I keep this area separate for my totemic stuff. However, while we're talking about totemic stuff, we may as well look at the totempedia. And in here, you'll see if you back up to the top, you'll get to totems and effects totem effects and then here are all the effects you can enable whenever you're you have to be really quite close to the totem pole for these to, to work but you know you can be so you make yourself mine faster don't care about any of these uh negates fall damage and lets you jump further when you think you're there you can't just put them all over an island and then then negate the fall damage because it takes time for it to apply it so you'll smack into the ground um you know hulk like well well banner like <laughs> And you won't get the actual, uh, you won't get the effect. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, resistance to damage, but slows you down. Uh, possibly cow. Uh, Enderman night vision is quite good. Um, but again, it's, it doesn't last very long. Horse, speed boost, etc. Horse, you might want to put around your base, etc. The main one is ocelot that I actually want. And pig. Both of those for our mob farm are going to be very useful. But we may as well add Enderman and cow as well. And maybe horse. So maybe cow and horse will counteract each other so if we do this entire page uh we should have a decent set of totem poles so we just need basically some raw logs to actually use uh rabbit jump boost i don't care uh spider is sometimes useful particularly in your base and you can put basically a full stack because these effects stack you can do a full totem pole full of wolves if you want to do more damage so uh yeah lots of stuff that you can actually do with all of those but um yeah you obviously let your imagination run right right now i need to go and craft some totem poles over near that farm and then we can enable it so i built a land bridge between our original island over to our darklands island just so that i have this available to run back again and get things to respawn uh, without building a huge tower and uh, drop shaft and stuff like that. Uh, there are punji sticks that we can use if we wanted to do something like that. Uh, yeah, punji sticks. Uh, there is an example of I think the wiki that basically shows you how to build a, a farm in like the the hunting dimension with punji sticks, which are fine. Uh, however, I don't have anything to push things. I don't think I have any. Certainly, we shouldn't have any fans. Uh, no, just just the wiki, the, the, just the tippy. I'm not sure why that's fan. Oh, fancy. Yeah, that's why. Um, I don't have vector plates yet, so I don't have any way of really pushing stuff on the top without something like, I don't know, maybe water or something uh, very vanilla like that. But this should do to get us the first few uh, shadow gems. I've got the, the all the totem poles here. I went with uh, a whole stack of wolf on one side and a whole stack of ocelot on the other, which should give me luck. So that should do. Uh, I also went with those that we mentioned before. So we've got cow, enderman, horse, horse, lot and pig. And if you look here, you'll see I've got luck stacked up because of the stack of uh, ocelot. I've got strength stacked up because of the stack of wolf. And then I've got night vision and slowness and speed. They Hopefully they should counteract each other as well as resistance too, because I have uh, the variety totem bowl there, another one there, and then two at the back as well, uh, technically. So I may well be in range of those if I get close enough. 
Uh, if not, I can always put up a third resistance one if I wanted to. But this should be good enough to get us started. So let's just break in here and I can just remove these uh, just remove these torches. And everything should go extremely black as soon as... <laughs> in here at least, as soon as I do this. So there we go. And you can see it's all red. So they're able to spawn in there. We can just head out for a little while and wait for them to come back. And, and hopefully everything will be, will be okay. And I like the idea of maybe mining into this. And uh, I don't know about bridging to other islands, maybe to that one because it's close enough, but the other islands are just far, far too far apart for that kind of thing. But these couple of close islands are perhaps quite useful. Uh, hopefully there's no uh, spawner on there and I don't need to wait in the dark. I can just go to sleep and let's go then and see if uh, anything has spawned. Otherwise, uh, I can just go back to the island and then wait for stuff to spawn in here. It shouldn't take them very long to, to do so. Uh, one's already there, you can see. Uh, what have we got? I uh, should get the night vision there. The night vision's on, so all my effects are on. We got a creeper, and uh, hopefully no creeper explosions. Doesn't sound like it. And uh, hopefully the, th the three stacks of luck will actually help here with this. So zombies, uh, we can do that. The shadow monsters, you can't really see, but you can see their... Um, the hood, if you like, and stuff like that. It's easier to see without the shaders, to be honest, for the shadow monsters. But you can see we've got some stuff. Uh, have I got any shadow stuff so far? No, just usual kind of rotten flesh. Uh, I don't have any... Um, I mean, I have normal hoppers, but I don't have any vacuum hoppers. So I do have to keep going in there if I actually want to go and see what's, what's available, which is why I built the other side, just in case I can actually go and pick it up that way. And there is our first shadow, shadow gem shard. We need nine of each to convert up, so we can put them in the press. Nine of those makes a shadow gem. So that um, that definitely makes sure that at least one of these you have a full stack of luck because when I did this without that, there's no way in my test world, there's, there's no way I got five of those at once. So yeah, very useful. And you can just run out and back and you should be able to get the first shadow gem in no time at all. A few minutes of running backwards and forwards later, I've gone and got nine of those shards. I've also got six of the shadow fragments as well, but the shards are the one we want. I've loaded them already into there. We just need to borrow you because they've decided to, to run away again. And uh, we have, uh, or we should have very shortly, once this press gets to the bottom, we should have our shadow gem itself. So, um, should be any time now. Yep, there it is. And here's our shadow gem. So dark gems, and that basically is the start of abyssal craft. So uh, down here we go to flame grilled a whopper, and you'll see that this is the main thing we actually need for this, apart from some red cedar. And that is just another. Let me just pop that up here so it doesn't get uh, lost. Uh, that is uh, another quick thing. We just need to get some saplings and uh, crops, plants. There we go. Saplings. One, two, three, four. Shouldn't need any more than that. Head to our little ceremonial area, and we have um, where am I? Where am I? Buffalo? Did they escape? Did they escape around here somewhere? Hmm. I'll find them later. <laughs> but we're gonna need buffalo teeth, so we we are gonna need them wherever they've headed off to. Uh, so yes, in here we're going to basically just plant our saplings, and then we're just gonna want to do another ceremony. So with our totemic stuff, we need to do this Rite of Spring. It basically turns any nearby saplings into red cedar saplings. So this one is flute, then drum. And uh, I've also put the spider thing here so I can go straight up the wall, stops horses getting in, and the buffalo must have died. I uh, can't find them anywhere, so I'll go and get some more cows. No, no big deal. Uh, so, uh, yeah, which one was it? Uh, flute, then drum. So flute, then um, drum. Okay, and then we can just go back to the rattle. And uh, just like that, it shouldn't take very long to actually get through this. Assuming that I don't run out of um, my progress bar at the top of the screen, should be fine. There we go, red cedar saplings. So these will make uh, quite a large set of trees. Um, I normally put them two by two, just makes a large bundle that we can go and do at once. And um, I've got the count down there. I want to... This, you really should be working. Spider, why don't you let me out? Hmm, not sure about that one. Uh, where's the totemic basis? Totems and effects, totem effects. Bat, and it gets fall damage. No, where's spider? 
lets you climb walls like a spider. There's, there's, and now it works. It can be a little bit odd. <laughs> Fine, that's enough. We've got everything we need. Red cedar saplings. Off to go and make those into the full-size trees. We just need some bone meal for that. I'm not sure if we've got any around. We can always grind some up. Um, we get them out of um, the strainer. There's there's one, and I've got five in my inventory. Always going to use bone meal anyway, so we can always just uh, drop it straight onto the grinder or in through the chest, but it doesn't make any difference as far as that's concerned. Off it goes. That'll grind up into bone meal, and off we go, and we can make our red cedar wood. But then I need to go and find the more buffalo to actually uh, grow. This time, I will take care of them, put them in a separate uh, enclosure, and then feed them with wheat or something, and we'll get uh, everything we need to finish the episode. Now, while you're out and about exploring, and I suggest you do so pretty often, uh, one of the things you're going to be wanting to go and look for is uh, basically thatched roofs houses like this one. If I remember rightly, that's where the um, that's where the map NPC um, villager actually lives. Um, let's go and see if that's actually the case. Let me just turn that mode off. Uh, are you actually in here, or is it just going to be loot? Um, well, uh, there's not very... Ah, there you are. Uh, cartographer, yes. So you'll take feathers, and you'll take ink sacks, and you'll return me a empty antique atlas. So yes, I'm going to... I, I did prepare. I brought some feathers uh, from chickens I saw on the way, uh, and also owls I think you can get as well. But that then lets you get hold of the empty antique atlas... And we can just put that there. And then if I right click, um, you can see I get my first version of the map. Now, it's not as good as Journey Map, but it is an early age map that you can actually use. And yes, if you right click, what we can do is just zoom in, click on a marker, put it here and say this is the cartographer. Uh, that's going to be fine for that. Um, is there any particular? Yeah, let's just put like a little house. So it's almost like an early Legend of Zelda map. And you can, of course, see that on the map as you actually zoom in and out. But if you leave it in your hotbar, it stays at the top like an actual mini map. <laughs> we finally got a map available in game. So little lots of other bits and pieces you want to pick up while you're exploring. Hemp and hemp seeds are very useful to have. I've got carrots and potatoes now and various different colors of flowers. You're going to need them for dyes fairly soon anyway. So having them available will be good and uh, make sure you repair your volokite on every time you land. Uh, other than that, we can head back to our base, and hopefully our buffaloes have grown. And we finally have enough buffalo for that to become easy to grab their teeth. Um, they're, they're just, just teething, it's fine, it's fine. So we can then craft a, basically a gear with this thing, there we go, and the gear can go in here. And we can then use that to craft a hand crank, which is important because we need... Where's my... Where did I put the machine? There it is, the millstone. So we need to grind this charcoal up. And you're going to need to do this probably with some food in your inventory because it uses up your own um, hunger and saturation, basically. So just stand on top of it. Those items will pop out into your inventory and just hold down on the food. Uh, be aware, though, that obviously you're going to be throwing your nutrition off, uh, but that, that's going to be okay. Um... Yeah, <laughs> I've been eating a little bit too much meat, um, but that's fine. Uh, we'll figure out a way to balance that shortly. I want to want to make more bread if we're going to do that, but um, I'd rather have automatic uh, stuff being dealt with. There we go. We've got two, uh, and that can go in here. That can go in here, and then we're crafting rock. There we go. Flame grill whopper. Good. That will then unlock the next stage across, which is a ace of melter base. Uh, and let's get down and melty. So we need to then make uh, porcelain, which is uh, a little bit uh, difficult to make. You need that millstone again. You need flint, clay, and white dye powder, which you can grind up from bone meal. So go and get your favorite horse. There are many, uh, but this one is mine. And get yourself some white dye powder from bone meal. Get yourself some clay and some flint, which is uh, straightforward. When the game doesn't really pause to garbage collect. Thank you, Java. Please. There we go. Um, now we've got all three of those. And uh, that should be enough to actually get us going. Again, just stand on top and collect enough, basically, porcelain. And now you've got to be doing these kind of things. So you're going to be getting me unfired porcelain. Porcelain brick, which you just put into a stove, uh, grill, etc. So we're going to need six for this. 
and six for this, uh, for the melter and the heater accordingly. Uh, so that's six. And then we're also going to need a uh, casting basin and a casting table as well as a faucet. So I think the faucet is unfired and you have to fire it if I remember rightly. Um, is it in here? I'll figure it out. But um, yes, lots of porcelain basically. So make that up, make a couple of extra stone grills and then we're ready to go with the melter and the heater. And here we go, the final crafting for this age, I think. Uh, I don't think there's anything else remaining. Let's just take a look. Um, there's this stuff down here for horse and carts. I didn't use them whatsoever, even in the test world. Uh, but you need to craft one to get to these other two um, achievements. But um, I'm not going to worry about that. They do give you a double chest worth of resources, uh, sort of storage, uh, unlike these. But we're about to basically bypass that whole thing when we move to a new age. These are fired um, clay barrel extensions, by the way. So if we just uh, click on that and then click on that, we should get both of those. And that's the end of the age. Yep. So we've finished age zero. We're now in age one. So finally, it should be labeled here. Uh, yep, age one. There we go at the top. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, uh, lots of stuff to cover, and that's going to be next episode. Um, basically, look, a regular crafting table. Look, in fact, let's just do that now, just because it just needs to be done. Um, birch wood planks, yeah, regular crafting table. Thank you very much. Uh, however, you can't put it back through to get tinkers until you unlock tinkers, uh, tinkers tables, which will retain their... Um, uh, retain their uh, you know ingredients, uh, but we can actually just craft both of those as well. So that's the table and the casting basin, and then we should be able to make the faucet as well. Uh, faucet, the porcelain version. There's an unfired and a porcelain. Yeah, so we got a basic. Oh, and we can even make the regular. F oh, I'm going to get into next episode now. No, I must just stop. But now before we we do too much, uh, but unfired force is just porcelain, and then you can fire it. So we need about six more porcelain to get that going. But I think that's it for this episode. We're in age one now, so we've finished age zero in two episodes. I think. Yeah, two episodes. If you've liked the uh, if you like the episodes, if you've liked the series so far, give it a thumbs up down below. It all helps the channel. And do remember to click on subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, the vast majority of you are not. And uh, click on the bell if you want notifications for more of these episodes or indeed other ones like Stationeers, which is coming up, and uh, other bits and pieces. So, yep, I will see you next episode. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.